taken like 45 minutes or so and kind of look at stuff to see if we can get some cross. Um, here, how you doing? Oh, we'll look at Ryan's too. Um, Um, you don't have to submit it again, but unless you've changed the URL. All right, did to put it in the group so I don't have to re import it? Um, yeah, okay. So um, I want to start with Steve's because he's here. Um, no. Yeah. Oh, you want me to wait till you're all set, ready to go? Okay. Rapid fire. Okay. So we'll come back. Um, so we'll start with Jillian's because she's ready to go. Um, and usually I'll have you um, share, but today. Yeah. Okay, well, well, it's too late now. Where did it go? Final project. Okay. Um, so sometimes it's helpful to have someone else drive. Sometimes it's helpful to have the author drive. So I want to kind of drive these a little bit. Um, and I've had a chance to look at them. I haven't had a chance to write about each one of them yet. Um, so... It would probably be better to have one of you drive, but we'll, we'll play with it this way. I yelled at him because he took your seat, Marjorie. That's what you said. Oh, well, I don't care. <laughs> okay. Um, so as I understand, Jillian, and correct me, so the kind of logic that she's gone here is that there's, this is, a, this is like a, a project. And Jillian's primarily interested in creating navigation, not so much in creating a complex structure with, you know, like a lot of, a lot of other projects are focused more on data structures. She's focused on the narrative structure. Is that fair enough? Yeah. Um, and there's like three, there's two main things that she's playing with. There's tiddlers that are tagged female and tiddlers that are tagged male or subjects, I guess, right? And so she's got these pull downs so you can navigate across all of them. These are all of your sections. Or you can navigate to the sections that are just female related or navigate to the ones that are male related. But there's overlaps. There's some that are related to both, right? Yeah. And there's none that are related to neither, right? Everything's tagged as male or female. And basically all is both, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know, with all or both. But it's the same. They're the same, right? Um, so what's a little weird about this is like the ones that are, um, so if I click women of New Guinea, then it tells me it's female, but then the male is empty. And if I click or select more photos than both the female and the male relate. And no matter which of those three go buttons I click, it takes me to the same place. So that's a little confusing to a user, right? If you found this in a website, you'd, you'd say, huh? So we have to help Jillian design this interaction. So, Ask her, the designer, questions. Like, what is it that she's trying to create? And let's see if we can figure out how to create that. Um, so first, we'll look at her code. And um, a bunch of you are using these select codes now. Um, I know Jillian is. Um, Steve played with selects, I think. Maybe not. Um, Derek's got some selects. Mickey's running selects. I think. So you don't know what select does? No, I think I used it, but I don't remember. Yeah. Select 
So it makes a pull down. Okay, so the first, what select does is it says, okay, select and write the results of your select to a tiddler. So she's writing it to dollar sign colon slash my tiddler. Part of the issue is that she's writing all three of her selects to the same tiddler. So that makes it a little confusing. And then you say, okay, well, what are the options I'm going to select from or what are the options I don't want to select among? And so she gets them by doing a list. So anything that's in that list becomes an option. And then there's that option code. So you view field equals title and that puts the name of the, that, that, that puts the, um, whatever she ends up selecting here is what's going to get written to dollar sign colon my tiddler. Um, if you want to see how that works, we can dollar sign colon slash. So you can see the value of the tiddler changing right above the select. Okay. So, if you just, so if you get to see how, so that's cool. And then she creates a button here called go, which really has nothing to do with the select, which navigates to my tiddler. Okay. Um, she could, do that I'm not saying you should but you could which doesn't change the functionality of the code at all because the three go buttons are going to the same place so that's might be the source of the confusion too it might be that you want to select three different tiddlers so that they have three separate navigations um, but this is really a cool idea that she's built here because it allows you to navigate based on your tags or your sections, right? So you can, so it's a way of navigating. Um, what you can't do, which is marginally unfortunate, um, you can't select and navigate in the same moment, right? You can't, why can't you do that? Why wouldn't that work? So for a application designer or website designer or game designer, you have you, you it would be good to understand this. Why doesn't that work? I wish I knew. No, I, I sort of know. I think I know, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. So um by doing the select, we're changing the value of the tiddler that's there. So now we're going to change the value. And now we want to navigate to it. So you can't change the value and navigate to it at the same time, as far as I know. Um, maybe we can put the navigate inside the select. Maybe that'll work. No, but right, because it, you have to, in order to use these actions, they have to be wrapped inside a button. Maybe we can write, maybe we can wrap it inside a button. It almost works, but then you can't select. Do you see how, do you see what we're doing there? So because we're hitting the button, but it's already got the selected values. So it's like, so they're two separate things, which you have to keep separate. You just, as far as I can tell, you can't write something and then navigate it to it at the same time. So she had it right. Um, how could she make this so that it was actually, not that it's not usable, but that it was, how could she improve this navigation? And this is very similar to, I think, what um, Michael wants to do in his, he doesn't know it yet, but he should be doing this, this as well. Do you need the R or should you just have male and female? Um, I would probably, I'm gonna close this so that I don't make any changes to it. 
I think at minimum, if you made them independent, then it might make more sense. Maybe that might, so at least you say, oh, well, which one do I want to go to? And now they're not like, they're not driving each other. So that was kind of my confusion. It's like, oh, that's weird. So, so putting them in, in three separate tiddlers would be pretty cool. So to do that, there is a. Um, so. Option groups. So you can do that kind of a select. Male, female. So you break this, you break it up in the select. And the code for that is at tiddlywiki.com. Um, it's got group labels and there's a logic there that so you could replace the group label with male, not female, and then have a select sort of as James was suggesting right in here. Um, so that's, that would work. What's the difference in that? You had something different in mind? Yeah. Which was how? Not that one, the one before that. The tiddler or the? The tiddler. This one? Oh, no, the tiddler. Uh, the wiki. Not, the wiki this one. No? No. Final project. Final project. All right, see how you have all the three selection boxes? Yep. What if we took all three of them, put them in one selection code? should technically work and it go. So say you select everybody's Indians, female, and whatever else, and it'll find all those tiddlers for that, for that selection. So if, like what Mickey does in his a faceted search, you might select male or female here, and then the tiddlers get driven here. Right, so, so this is called faceted search. So in Mickey's, you, set, you select the faction first, which then dictates what race options you have. And um, I think Chris is doing this, something similar to that. No restrictions on yours, okay. Um, so I don't know if that, is that's what you were talking about? Yeah. Like a drill, okay, that's like a, so that's, you see that, um, you see that at Amazon, the evil Amazon. Um, so you can navigate down to, right? So this is, this, you can build this now. You can refine by, right? You can build this in TiddlyWiki now. You get the logic. Um, you just say, oh, well, just give me the English. I don't even know what we're searching on, but you get the point, right? That's the same. They're using this. They're using TiddlyWiki. They just, all right, they're probably not actually, but um, so yeah, you could do that too. That that's called faceted search, where you kind of, or I used to call it a drill search. You drill down. So yeah. Um, anyway, that I, I that might help you a little bit um, moving the choice because that seemed to be a really important part of your thing. Um, okay, so. Steve's project, five, huh? That's me. This is you, right? So here's my copy of it. Um, and I just want to show one thing because Steve does really cool stuff like this one, um, which is nicely done because he uses the each feature. Um, where it's a little funky was this. Okay, there's, that's a long list, but looking at his code, um, so he's brute forcing this. 
because he's manually putting in these tag veterans, tag newbies, tag dreams and memes. Those are all what? Returning statuses? How could he do this with less code? Okay, what he's got is um, newbie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I that, would do. What's the other one? Uh, dreams and memes. Dreams. Right. Go ahead. The only way I can think of is I could do another each with the tags and just remove the tags that I don't want. But there are a lot of tags. So yep. Really He's got like 90 tags. I can't, I didn't count them. How could he do this? So what are these again? <coughs> Returning status. So this, what if he just tags this tiddler, each of these three tiddlers with that, and does an each on returning status? Right? So you, every time that you, when you have things that you, you want to associate your tags with another level of tag. You want to, I call that thinking, think of it tagging up. You want to tag up and down. So the, yeah, you create that structure. So here's, Here's his, and that's not so bad on here. Here's my version of the same one. Um, oh, that's my version. Home crit. My version of the same thing has a lot less code. Okay, so I tagged them all returning status, and you do the each, and you'll see that. Um, okay. This is another feature um, on a list filter, empty message. Um, like if you list something and there's nothing there, it would be nice to get a response saying, oh, you don't have anything tagged there. And that's the, um, and I'll post this to the list under Steve's response when he submits it to the group and says, oh, I've made some changes. Here's my wiki, go look at it. And I'll say, oh, well, here's my changes to it. So I did that a couple of places. Always look for ways to streamline your code. If you've got, if you're repeating your code and like you're doing the same thing over and over again, then you're probably doing something that could be done more efficiently. So just because it works doesn't mean it's the best you could do. So it's good to get it to work, and then you want to refine it. So that was my suggestions on Steve's. I think I did this on um, confirmation was huge. Where's the confirmation? Um, List of characters by confirmation. Yeah, that one. That's the only one look at. Yeah, this is like, are you kidding me? Yeah, no, it's fine. But um, in my version, I think I did. Okay, this is another feature you might not have come across. Um, Have you used the prefix as part of a filter? So I just found all the tiddlers that begin with confirmed colon. Yeah, so I just use his, I mean, that's kind of a, it's a bad thing to do, but it works. Because it's, but it works, right? So you get all the tiddlers that begin with a certain set of characters. And then you can find them all. And then you can find all the tiddlers that are tagged with the name of that tiddler, right? So that works. So this, this does exactly what you were doing in like five lines of code instead of, so what these, yeah, so those, that five lines of code does what this is doing. Yeah, I did actually. So then I want, so that's the, okay. So let's look at, so tell me how the object navigator works. Let me just read. Let me restart it so that it actually works. I don't think I saw the object navigator. Oh, there it is. Object navigator is a link. Ah, very cool. Okay, so what? So basically, you choose three different uh, categories to narrow down your search. 
the first category is the broad engine, and then the other two are uh, related to that first one. So it'll change the possibilities when you do that. Three levels? Right. Yeah. And then it gives you all of the results, and it tells you how many results there are allowed. Very nice, very nice. So he's doing the same faceted search that Mickey's doing. Right? Yeah. So one one. yeah. Yes. That right? Is, that is what inspired me. Yeah, right. So what did you modify from Mickey's? Why are you doing these removes? Because there's a whole bunch of stuff that I don't want showing up. But now I can go through and fix that. <laughs> how will well, well, Sorry, sir. Uh, the reason I did that is because uh, in order to make it work with all three of the different types of objects, it needed to be a little bit more generic. But because it was a little more generic, it also caught a bunch of other okay. garbage that I didn't want. So. What I when I see the like this this kind of stuff remove special cases, it would be good to do that programmatically. You could put a field in each of those that say bad, and then remove them that have the field value get rid of value bad or something like that, so that if you just de determine enough that way you don't have to go back to this code to fix it. All you have to do is fix it in your objects. So the more that you can abstract things, the better. Um, this works though, but it's just like your, your hand, you're eliminating things by hand instead of by code. So these things, even Steve, Aaron, Will, characters, stage, DLC items, they should have something that differentiates them at the tag or field level so that you can get rid of them. Probably do that with a, a tag itself, really. Yeah. Tag them all. Tag. Or something. Yeah. Um, but you can also use fields for that. Tags and fields are the same thing. Right. So the more you use fields, the better you'll be in the long run. So if you can get used to using fields, I think that's good. So this is pretty cool. And then they, um, yeah. And then what he's doing is he's, oops, tag. Yeah. He's using the value of the first select to, drill down and narrow his choices. And then he does this count filter, which we learned in the very beginning, um, and just links them. Cool. Yeah, I don't know why you're, um, I don't know why this works. So, um, if you, if you open and close it with a list, then you get them indented. I don't know if you want them indented. So this is the, this. Do you know that HTML? UL and OL, so unordered list and ordered list. So OL is, gives you those numbers. And then UL is an unordered list, so it gives you bullets. And apparently you don't need them, but depending on your browsers, you might. So the LI is a list item that if it doesn't, if it's not part of an OL or UL, then it, it may not render depending on your browser. So it looks fine in Chrome, but Firefox might say, I don't know what an LI is because I don't have a so it's like it's not proper code and it might work today in the next version it won't work. Like that's the kind of stuff like Internet Explorer used to accept all sorts of bad evil code that Firefox did. So it's kind of, yeah, so I know, I don't know how you're supposed to know that, but yeah. Um, but you see how yours are non-indented or flushed left? The bullets are flushed left, which I don't know if you wanted that, but I mean, I want you didn't the, care. I want the better yeah, I think so. I think, yeah, and you have to get the code. You don't want to put it inside your list. You want the UL to start, unordered list to start before the list begins and end after the list. Yeah, and lots of times TiddlyWiki doesn't make you close your tags, but, you know, you should. Um, 
so yeah, that's pretty cool. Very nice. That's a, that's a really nice navigator, um, sort of a two or three step navigator. So that's cool. Thanks for pointing that out. I missed it. Um, I'm going to leave Steve's. I'm going to leave my copy of it and move towards Mickey's. Have you done new stuff yet, Mickey, or you're still? Okay. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, but background. yeah, it just makes it impossible to see. That's better. Yeah. Reference. Okay. So what I started to do was I named it reference, but when you would click even on a legendary item, it pops up some table. Uh-huh. Let's say one of the legendary items is Banker of the Half Giants. It'll pop off with that item. But I stopped halfway because I'm wondering if there's a way to have it so when you scroll over it pops up with an image. Like a rollover. A rollover. Yeah. Yeah. So like, so what do you want? So when you roll over that part right there. You want to have an image. An image yeah. Okay. Um, you may know how to do that. We were just doing that the other night in the Monday night. Somebody wanted to do that. Sort of. How'd we do it? Tool tips, right? That's what they're called. Yeah. Is a mouse, it's a mouse over function. Right. Anybody know how to do mouse overs? I, I saw a um, plugin for it. I'm not sure if it was um, Chrome or Mac. Um, but it's a plugin. So you want to display an image? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, you can definitely do that. I don't know how. It'll take me a little bit longer than I can do right here. So that would be cool. Yeah. So, yeah, you, you should be able to do it pretty straightforwardly. Um, okay. Yeah, I think you're right that this is kind of weird. This doesn't really do much for you, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. And um, Marcus, what are we doing in yours? This is your TOC. Let me just reboot it. I'm not sure where I am. Don't forget to set, yeah, okay. So, what are these? Um, Jan, uh, I just did the randomization and they had So, every time I click this, I get a different one? Yeah. It's not. That's what you want, though, right? No. Oh, really? <laughs> no. I thought that was cool. I thought that was your intent. So what's the, what's the concept here of a reading? This is, this is actually pretty cool. I, I thought this was exactly what you wanted to do. I was impressed. So what is it that you're trying to do? I thought you were supposed to deliver a set of random cards. Right. But if um, someone like you have 10 random cards, if you go back to the first one, it's not going to change on your own. So that's what it's doing. So, okay. So basically, you want to open the wiki and have a button. So you should, you should sort of write this out in a, in a tiddler. So you want to open So he wants to open the wiki. So tell me if I get it right. You want to open the wiki and have a button that says deal. Is it called a deal or? Yeah. Okay. And I think this might, I don't know, maybe this is what Derek's doing too. I'm not sure. Or Ben maybe. Okay. You want a deal. And you get seven cards, is it? Ten. Ten. Ten cards of a specific thing. So you want to deal. So you want to click deal and write those ten cards to ten different tiddlers. Not, you know, named current influences, obstacles, past functions, etc. 
and then they're stable unless you until you hit deal again and then you can navigate through your hand okay and so what's happening now is that your current influences yeah so you're you've got the you're you've got to move this to a state piddler that stays stable um how would you do that it's the same as steve's game and aaron's andrew andrew aaron andrew jeez what's the matter with me today right where those um pull they've got the pull downs with the words for the um uh, mad libs so like you select it stabilize it in a tiddler and then that gets presented so we'll do current influences so um So if you, um, what is, is it set, who uses action set field? Steve, do you use action set fields? I have. So what is it? It's action dash set field. Um, titular. Um, I think that's it. Something like that. Um, Not quite, but basically you want to you want to set current influence to be a specific field once you press the deal button. I can show you how to do that in a bit. It's, once you do it for one, it will be easy. So, but the concept is he deals these seven cards and you flip through that. Okay, that's a pretty cool tool. Okay, um, and anybody else that we want to run through? I think. Why don't we leave it there and then I'll just work with you. I want to tell you one more thing. There's um, anybody get emails about the student projects showcase. Has anyone's been seen that show up? Um, is it the mini maker fair? I was asked to be the judge. I may not see the student, here it is. Look, I got this in February. Further details can be found here. When is the deadline for submission? Did I miss it? Register, April 13th. I didn't miss it. Okay. Um, so I would encourage, I think you can do electronic projects. I'm pretty sure you can because that was like the whole point of it. Um, demonstrations, lightning talk. So it, I would encourage those of you who have a, and most of you have a pretty cool project to submit them to the showcase so that we can show people what it is that you've been working on. Um, and you can win money.
and awards. You can put it on your resume. Um, so it's on the deadline to register is next a week from Friday. Um, and I forget how much the awards are, but they're surprisingly high. $50 or $100. So you can submit your project and it's a really cool thing to do. Um, so I will find more details and make sure that you can submit them. Um, and we'll talk about it Tuesday, but think about submitting over the next, over the next week, submitting your final project. And then the last thing, most of you have progressed pretty far, but some of you are beating your project, so it might be, you should have time to do one more or two more projects, either extending yours or keep building on it. So, um, all right, so let me start.